Welcome to Building Harmonica Technique, a comprehensive study of harmonica technique and blues soloing concepts. My name is David Barrett, the author of the Harmonica Masterclass Lesson Series. Within this single video series, you will learn everything pertinent to the studying blues harmonica player. Not only will major topics be covered, but also the minute details that lead to the mastery of this instrument. Each video will cover a specific grouping of ideas. In some cases, an idea will start in one video and complete in another. The reason for this is that there are many different levels of technique and mastery of another technique might be required to complete an idea. For the fullest understanding of all the techniques, I recommend viewing all four videos within the series. The topics covered in these videos are supported by Harmonica Masterclass books and CDs in the lesson series. Refer to the back of this video for details about the entire Harmonica Masterclass series. If you have any questions regarding this book or any other books within the line or the videos, look at the Harmonica Masterclass website at www.harmonicamasterclass.com or contact us by mail at P.O. Box 1723, Morgan Hill, California, 95038. Okay, let's get started. Properties of a bend. Let's talk about the physics of a bend. A bend is created from a constricted air passage. In video one, we talked about always keeping your embouchure open and relaxed. Here's our ta, there's our upper palate, our hard palate, and then our soft palate. And here's our tongue, ta, ta, ta. And the idea is we wanted to be in this zero position of dropped down and a little bit back. And what happens is we have this nice, large, open air passage. And here's our goal, always to be open, to have this nice, warm, strong air passage for the harmonica to play. Now what happens in a bend is the tongue moves back and up and humps up. And the goal is to create a specific constricted air passage right here to basically change the air pressure of the air going through the harmonica. And what we're trying to do is really focus that airstream in and we'll talk a little bit more about how or what type of syllables we can use to focus in that airstream. Let me just play an example of a bend. Here's the C harmonica three draw. And what happens on a bend is that you have a levering action of your draw and blow reed. Here, if I'm inhaling, I've got the draw reed coming in and the blow reed coming, going out. What happens is the draw reed, as we start to bend, what's happening is we're taking this large airstream and we're constricting it down. It's kind of like thinking as if you were to have a pipe that's one inch or one foot in diameter and you have a certain amount of pressure going from this side. Say it's 100 pounds of pressure. And if this pipe goes into about half of its diameter, what's going to happen is that the pressure at the other end of that pipe is going to be much stronger and the water is going to be moving much faster. The same effect happens on the harmonica. So here's this draw reed coming in, vibrating, and as we bend, this reed comes in and the blow reed starts to take over the transfer, and now the blow reed is actually bending. Even though I'm continuing to inhale and bend, the blow reed is actually the note that vibrates when we go lower. So what happens if we were to think of the four draw? The four draw bend starts and then transfers the vibrations to the blow side, and the blow reed is actually what we're hearing. Let's now look at the bending and how it relates to the piano. Here's one draw D, one blow C. Now you see the distance between the one draw and the one blow? We have the flat, in, right in between that would be D down to D flat. We can bend down from D to D flat. And it won't go any further. Then we have the two draw G and two blow E. We can bend down to any notes in the middle. Three draws B and three blows G. We can bend to anything in the middle. That'd be B flat, A, and A flat. Four draws D, four blows C. It's the same as the one draw and one blow. And then six draws A, six blows G, so you can do six draw, bend, A flat. Now we skip the five draw, there's a reason for that. Five draws F and five blows E. See there's no black key in between, there's no unnatural half step. 
If I were to bend the five draw and it did go down a half step, it should be E. Let's see if it matches. You see how it, it fights basically that E? So we're actually in between that. Now it doesn't mean we can't bend on the five, it just means we can't use it as a diatonic note within our diatonic patterns that we use. Now for the blow bends, it switches over from the, uh, from the draw to the blow side. So we have seven blow would be C, seven draws B, that's a natural half step, so there's no bend. So we got eight blow E, eight draw D, so we can get eight E flat. Then nine blows G, nine draws A, excuse me, F. So we can go nine blow G down to G flat. And then we have ten blow C, and ten blow, or ten draw would be A, so we have B and then B flat. Like I showed you on the chart, because B is so difficult to control, it's going to pop down to B flat. And for us blues players, B flat works fine. I'll play the B on the way up so you can hear it. See how difficult it is to control? Plus the C harmonic itself is a little bit high in pitch to do a 10 blow bend. Draw bend embouchure. Being that everything that happens in the harmonica happens inside of our mouth, we need to use syllables to explain tongue and mouth positions. Now, E, this is your upper set of teeth, and there's your molars right here. What happens is your tongue, when you say E, and actually say E, E, see how the tongue itself actually goes and sits on those upper set of molars? Well, we have this big, large mouth, and what happens is by saying this E, it now constricts that air passage into this embouchure. What is that embouchure? It's the teeth, roof of the mouth, and the tongue. Go ahead and say E. Draw in real hard, and you'll see how that cold air itself actually comes through, and it's very cold. So the idea is this is our first step in the, uh, in the embouchure for bending. Now, if you say you backwards, pulls your tongue to the back. You, you, you. Bring your tongue back. You, you. So what happens with this, if here's... Our, our teeth again, our molars, the tongue goes here. What happens, and we'll need to turn backwards here, is your tongue, ew, backwards, ew, and the tongue comes to the back of the mouth and humps up. So what's happened is by pulling back, we're changing the pressure and we're pushing up as well and really making a, a finite pressure point for the bend. So let me give you an example voiced. can kind of hear the spit gurgle in the top there. You really know that the pressure is very, very strong. Let's now try all the bends starting on the four draw. Here's the four draw bend. Ew. Now remember, your molars, when you say E, it goes up to the top. You want to bring that tongue inside of your molars if you really need to focus in on that bend, if you're not getting the bend. You don't necessarily have to be tight or constricted to be able to make the bend. Well, constricted you do need to be, but not necessarily tight with your muscles. So when you bring that tongue back, really push that tongue up and constrict that air passage between the roof of your mouth and the tongue and your teeth. That's your bending spot. Three draw. Now, what has to happen is, as you go lower on the harmonica, your tongue has to travel further back. So, from the four draw, you're going to use kind of the back middle, or middle back of the tongue. Where the three draw, you need to bring it further back. Now, the two draw. Now, this feels more like it's humped up in the back. So, it's in the back, and then really humped up. Now the one draw. Now this one isn't as much pressure on the roof of the mouth as it is as really just bringing your tongue back. What happens is on the higher reeds, because they're actually shorter, they take a lot more air pressure to be able to bend, where the longer reeds take a lot more air volume to bend. 
So for the four draw, listen to the embouchure. Three draw. Here's a little deeper, further back. Again, deeper, bigger, really drop your jaw, and then one draw. So you don't actually hear the, uh, the constriction as much on the one draw, but a lot of air really moves through. And you see my jaw really drop. Ooh. When you're doing the bend, you can actually think like as you're going to the bottom reeds that you really want to bend down and make that focus. Now the six draw is going to be the absolute opposite of the one. Now the six draw bend is going to be a very, very small movement where a bend for the two draw might be bay The six draw is going to be very, very small. Now the five draw itself, because there is five draw F and five blows E, we looked at the keyboard before and saw that there's no half step in between, you can still use. It's not just a diatonic half step. See, it bends a little bit, but not much. So it's used more for expression. Let me give you an example. So don't discount your five blow just because it's not a diatonic bend. Use it for expression. So again, six draw down to the one draw. Four draw. Three draw. One draw. So you can really hear for each read that you play on the harmonica, it's very specific in where its placement is. Here's a helpful hint. Visualize the inside of your mouth for all the bends. Focus on where the tongue is when constricting the air passage. Just kind of get in your mind's eye and think, where is the tenseness happening? Am I really moving back? Sometimes it's actually, uh, your tongue will be moving forward, but you're thinking it's moving back. A lot of times, because this is a muscle that we really haven't used in this way, you need to really get into your mind's eye to help you with the placement of the tongue. And also, think about where the constricted air passage is. You want to make sure that the constricted air passage is in the right spot. Obviously, if it's in the wrong spot, you're not going to get the bend at all. So with the constricted air passage, use the four to help get the three, and the three to help you get the two, and the two to help you get the one drop. Because remember, we're moving back in this embouchure. Let's go ahead and go to the first level of bending expression. What happens is we have many levels of bending proficiency. And the first level of bending is bending for expression. And that'd be simply bending down the note and coming back up. Practice all those bends until you feel comfortable with that. Let me play an example of bending for expression. So the idea is we're just using this for extra expression. Now the second level of bending is stopping at the bottom. Now stopping at the bottom allows us to actually play a bend lower down and then keep on moving down the harmonica. An example would be four draw, four draw bend, three draw, two draw. Now the important part is that when you're doing the bend, that here's the four draw, and you're bending the four draw down, that you stop your airstream, and then when you go to the three draw, that you completely open it up to the natural big open, remember that zero position of dropping the tongue down and back? We need to be back to that position every single time we're not doing a bend. Otherwise, anything in the middle is a constricted air passage, and thus gives us poor tone. Really open it up. So for the four draw bend, what we want to do is we're going to bend the four draw down, hold the airstream, hold it, stop the airstream, and then right before you go to three, relax, open. Watch. There's a big change between the four and the three. Now, if you don't relax the bend, watch what happens. We get a residual bend on the three draw. Actually sounds okay, but that's not the effect that we're looking for. We want to make sure the three is nice and normal. 
So as an exercise, you can do four draw, four draw bend, three draw. And the same on the three. And on the two. The third level of bending is starting at the bottom. The idea to achieve this, start by bending down, holding the embouchure just like we did before, and stop the airstream as if we're going to move to another note. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to start that note back up because you haven't changed your embouchure and then bring the note back up. So here's what happens. Hold it. Try it with me. Now we're going to try the second part twice. Now, the idea is we're trying to build muscle memory. And the muscle memory is that the foredraw, when you go to bend, that it's there waiting for you. So doing this clamping down, holding, stopping, staying there, and kind of memorizing that position, and then releasing that bend, that's what the bent at the bottom is all about. Because what, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take advantage of all the bends and use them as separate, specific diatonic notes. So let's do it again. Relax it. Now here's a great example, the bent turnaround. And what the bent turnaround does is a four draw bend, four draw, five draw, four draw, four draw bend, three draw. So four draw bend, four draw, five draw, four draw, four draw bend, three draw. Now let's see what that sounds like without the harmonica. So the constriction happens right on the four draw. Also recommendation, and we're going to really look at this further in video four, but use your jaw to move over. Watch my jaw. Now the idea of the jaw is that we have many moving pieces on the harmonica, and to be able to use the jaw to move around, we can use all the other techniques to make up for that. Here's a bent turnaround on the four draw, the three draw, then the two draw. And the idea for this is make sure that the bend is strong. If it ever gets weakened, you need to go back, do it a little slower. And what's neat about this one is many of the exercises I'm going to give you, you can actually use in context. Let me give you an example. That's how you get the speed using bends. Remember, three levels of bending. Bending for expression, stopping at the bottom, and then starting at the bottom. And one more example on starting at the bottom is the idea is we now want to make each note articulate notes. There's the bend. So that we can do licks like this now. Hear me emphasizing the bend? Now I'm not going to emphasize it as much. Now we start to make the bends more part of the notes that are available to us on the harmonica.